So is Kamala doing okay? Nope. She's down, Joe. I, uh, I think they found out that she's retarded, and now we're basically fucked. Trump is killing us at the polls, so yes, we're gonna lose Joe. Damn it. Wait, wait. What if I come back to run again? As candidate? Yeah. Well, uh, let me put it this way, Joe. The only person in this world who is even more retarded than Kamala Harris is basically you. So no, come Joe, on, man. you're just not going back yet. Shot. Let's let it all play out, okay? Let's just, we'll talk later, Joe. Okay. Women looking fine up in here. <laughs> there you go welcome back guys welcome back man oh man so in a desperate attempt to get the black men vote miss kamala thought of a great idea she put out a proposal which van jones called a love letter finally kamala harris sent us a love letter that to you that might have been a policy document <laughs> I read that as a love letter from Kamala Harris to black men who need some love, black men who need some respect, black men who need some concern and con some care and consideration. You know, we, we need some mamala <laughs> from Kamala. And we got that. We stood on business. We said we wanted to hear something. Everybody else is getting something. What are we going to get? And she came with a, a love letter of support for our work our wealth and our health. This proposal says that she's going to give up to $20,000 to a million black men and others. You know what those others mean, right? Yeah. So you're going to get up to $20,000 forgivable loans. A forgivable loan. What does that mean? Forgivable loans. Yeah, it sounds like another PPP scam. They're going to get your ass. On top of all that, I'm not going to go through all 125 and all that, but the one that stuck out to me the most was the weed. She's going to give you weed, people. You got to forgive a lot of things about Trump to vote for him. And yeah. you said, oh, yeah, how would it go over if he said, I'm going to give you free weed, black guys, <laughs> go enjoy yourselves. That's what Harris's plan is. Yeah. Why isn't that working for you? Uh, well, the Harris plan is not work for me because basically if uh, black men were a important thing to Kamala Harris, she would not be putting out this little five point proposal three weeks out of an election. She would not be going out of her way to talk to black men three weeks before the election. Right. And like I said, if Donald Trump had put out a proposal that said, hey, black men, I want your vote. Here's I'm going to legalize marijuana. Do you know what the Kamala Harris campaign would say about that? It's completely ridiculous. It's disrespectful to black men. 20 stacks and some weed, folks. <laughs> This is what she thinks of you guys. All of y'all potheads. All of y'all smoking weed. This is all we think about is weed. Oh, cannabis? I just feel strongly people should not be going to jail for smoking weed. And we know historically what that has meant and who has gone to jail. Mm -hmm. Second, I just think we have come to a point where we have to understand that we need to legalize it and, and, and stop criminalizing this behavior. And so, and I've actually, this is not a new position for me. I, I have felt for a long time we need to legalize it. So that's where I am on that. I love it. Well, okay. No Hennessy, no slits malt liquor bull. What do y'all call that shit? Malt liquor, none of that. Just weed. Ask about your position on legalizing marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a proponent of that, but I know there are a lot of people who are. It's not my issue. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 stacks and some weed if you vote for me. It's not going to work. It's a bribe, and it's not going to work. I hope you black men are smarter than that. And I think she's looking after the pookie votes. She's looking for the lowest common denominator of the black men. She's not looking for business owners because in the end, business owners are going to pay that tax. None of this is going to help everybody out. She's looking for knuckleheads, weed, and 20 stacks, forgivable loans. Anyway, 
So while she's uh, spiraling out of control, she goes on to the breakfast club and do a town hall radio interview. And once again, she gets on with Charlemagne, the fraud, and the same answers. And a lot of your press hits get criticized. You know, folks say you come. Uh, very scripted. They say you like to stick to your talking points. And some media says you have... That would be called discipline. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Speak okay, to that. but go on. No, I was, I was say, some people <laughs> say you have an inability to fearlessly say who you are and what you believe. I know that's not true. But, mm-hmm. what, but what do you say to that criticism? And is it fair for SNL to make fun of it? Hasn't Maya Rudolph been wonderful? Yes. I think I, I have nothing but admiration for the comedy. And I think it's it's important to be able to laugh at yourself and each other. But what do you say? People in, the, say in the spirit of, of obviously comedy and yes. not belittling people as my opponent would do. But what do you, but what do you say to people who say you, you stay on the talking points? I would say you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Even Charlemagne had a caller out on it. I mean, listen, here's the thing. Um, I love having conversations, which is why I'm so happy to be with you this afternoon. And the reality is that there are certain things that must be repeated to ensure that I have everyone know what I stand for and the issues that I think are at stake in this election. Mm -hmm. And so it requires repetition. You know, some people say that if until someone has heard the same thing at least three times, it just doesn't stay with you. So repetition is important. And for that reason, yes, at my rallies, I say the same thing when I go to Detroit as I do in Philly, as I do wherever I am, to make sure that people hear and and receive what I think are some of the most um, critical issues that are at stake in this election. Now, I understand you got a same talking point, but it's the same cadence. It's verbatim. You never go off script. It's the same thing. That's why people don't believe a word you're saying. You are reading a script. You are a robot. So I was raised as a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. Now, Charlamagne the God the other day called her out on something. And let's take a look. Dad, they was running during oh, the football man. games this weekend claiming the vice president supports funding gender transition surgeries for all prison inmates and migrants in the U.S. That was nuts. That, that I, don't, was, I don't know if it I was... I wouldn't say nuts, but nuts. that was crazy. Well, that, was, that was funny. I don't, know, nice. I don't know if it was the <laughs> backdrop of football, but when you hear the narrator say Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners, that one line, I was like, hell no, I don't want my taxpayer dollars going I to that. I definitely see that she did That it. ad was effective. Kamala took a picture <laughs> with a transgender. And it was... It was this is what they were saying that it made it seem like Kamala supports transgender sex changes in jail with our money. That's what they, that's what it came yes, across. Yeah, th- that, that what they're saying. That yes. was yes. It said it literally said uh, that Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners, and it talks about how you know uh, uh, she she supports funding gender transition surgeries for all prison inmates and migrants in the United States. That ad was impactful. I was it like it was. I'm it not was gonna doing, lie. I was like, damn. Was it because it was during football? Yes, I think it was doing because it was during football. That's, that's but then last saying, week, like the contrast of it. Yes. yes. But then last week, they had he likes, likes tampons in boys' bathrooms. I would not oh, have paid what? that. I don't think I would have paid that commercial no attention if it was any other time. But when you're watching <laughs> football and you just mind, you just what? What the hell? Yeah, he was surprised about that. That you are willing to give tax money away to these prisoners. Even Charlemagne ain't going for that. But he's going to toe the line. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, I, I absolutely would endorse Vice President Kamala Harris. You know, I supported Kamala Harris in 2020 when she ran for president. You know, I was out there on the campaign trail with her. You know, um, she was the only reason that I voted for the, the Biden-Harris ticket to begin with. And, you know, we have our, you know, disagreements on air and off air. But I... I think that, you know, she is the perfect person, you know, to, 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 to be in these, to fight in these unprecedented times right now. He's still going to vote for her regardless. He's going to toe the line. It's another horrible interview by Kamala. But today is a day. At 5 o'clock Eastern, she's going to be on Brett Bear's show on Fox. And we all know that Brett is a real journalist. Not that shit on MSNBC. Not that CNN bullshit. Not even that 60 Minutes. Even though Bill Whitaker is a is a, a true journalist, but they're going to edit and chop it up. This one here, I believe it's going to be live. It's not going to be chopping it up. It ain't going to be no edit. It's going to be straight raw. And we're going to see how she's going to hold up to the flame. 
Is she going to wilter or she's going to get brighter? Kamala, it's too late. You have four years to 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 do something for the African American community. We don't. We, we know what you're trying to do now. You're trying to pander because you saw the polls. You said that's why you're trying to get a Barack Obama. That's why you're trying to get uh, Magic Johnson because you know that you're losing our support. You've lost our support. I don't say you're losing. You've lost our support. We know that it's all lies. Anything you can do to get in office, we know you're a chameleon. You shape shift depending on what it is to get in office. But you have four years. We don't want your free weed. Because uh, uh, black men know where to get it from. We don't want your free weed, and we don't want more promises about money you're going to give us that you have four years to give us that you didn't. We don't want more racism. We wanted tangible results, and you you failed us your whole administration. Anyway, that's my thought for the day, guys. Hit that like button, and I'll see you a little later on. We're going to talk about this interview, all right?